Luca Cosuto. Some of you already know him since he has been helping as an instructor during the workshop. From those that do not know him yet, he's a bioinformatician expert of NGA's data analysis working at the bioinformatics core facility at the CRG in Barcelona. And apart from implementing some next flow pipelines, he's also very involved in training your own researchers as, as you have already experienced. He's from Napoli, and this makes that it's always a pleasure to visit the CRG bioinformatics facility, since they probably have the best coffee at the CRG. And today he will present us Master of Pour, Master of Pores, sorry, a pipeline that is the, the result of the collaboration between two groups at the CRG, NOAA's lab and the bioinformatics core facility itself. And as its name suggests, the pipeline deals with analysis of nanopore data from the direct RNA sequencing. So go ahead, Luca. Thanks, thanks for the kind introduction. So yeah, I, I, I said uh, I work in the bioinformatics core facility. So this is uh, the place uh, where we work. So it's a really nice place. We were lucky for that. And we were lucky also because in this, this place, uh, was invented next floor so we had the opportunity to to learn from the beginning next floor and we are quite uh, enthusiastic users of uh, uh, of the tool so um, this is just to show you that uh, you can make pipelines with the next floor and those pipelines can be can be used uh, and uh, can be uh, published as well so um, I make this presentation in particular to show you that uh, um, now there are technologies that can be used also from uh, uh, your consortium uh, for for annotation and, uh, and for uh, for uh, for improving uh, uh, the the analysis of particular kind of data in this particular kind of nanopore. So uh, yeah, this is I said is a collaboration between two groups because this is the way we we work so we are a, a core facility so we don't have our own projects what we do is to help uh, other groups at CRG and also outside to to achieve their goal so uh, we are a small group of four people uh, in the bioinformatics unit uh, we collaborate with with other ones in this case uh, the the collaboration was the group of Evanovoa that is experts in uh, epitaraskitomics and RNA dynamics so they are uh, in past we were mostly used in doing analysis for other people but now what we are doing is to help other people to achieve basically their goal by making pipelines for them so they are they have their own bioinformaticians they make their own tools uh, in such, some way we help them in package them and uh, in, in, in pipelines uh, to make them easily usable for for other people and also to shape them in a way that their work is reproducible and uh, scalable and so on. So basically what we do is to uh, make pipeline together. So we co-develop and uh, the, the output of this sometimes is, is a publication like, uh, like we had uh, with them. This was one year ago and we, we noticed that it was quite successful in the in the media. <laughs> this was uh, was funny because when I was preparing the the presentation, I realized that likely because this was the first pipeline able to uh, handle uh, nanopore uh, nanopore data, in particular nanopore uh, uh, data for uh, direct RNA sequencing. And then I think also because some of the people was using this pipeline for 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 analyzing uh, uh, viral RNA, since this is. Uh, an RNA pipeline. So uh, I think that's one of the reasons that get uh, some uh, attention in the media. So just a, a small introduction about uh, a little introduction about what we're talking about. So uh, NGS started a long time ago. Um, the RNA, the transcriptome is now it's more than 15 years that we, we know something about. And basically thanks to a technology uh, that uh, allows you massive analysis of, 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 the, of the transcripts. So you, you are able to sequence a huge amount of DNA or RNA uh, using Illumina technology. But for doing that, what you uh, need to do is to break those sequences in small pieces. So what you get is uh, millions or hundreds of millions of small DNA pieces. Uh, then, of course, for analyzing uh, uh, RNA, what you need uh, is to change 
this uh, to revert the, 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 the transcription so to, to use a reverse transcription step for for analyzing uh, uh, analyzing the the material because those kind of technologies they cannot read directly RNA uh, they are they have these these limits of course it's not a huge limit because once you make this step you are, uh, are able to to get a lot of information and thanks to that for for several years we had a lot of information and we discovered a lot of new things about long long coding for instance uh, the kind different kind of transcripts that are produced and also we measure the transcriptome of, of a lot of uh, uh, organism in particular this was uh, done for 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 any kind of uh, you know a bacteria or, or animal or so, whatever so there is no limitation with that and uh, this is basically the process. So you start from, from DNA, you obtain the RNA, you do a step or reverse transcription, and thanks to that, you can sequence like it was, uh, like it were uh, DNA. So with that, you have pros and cons. So the pros is that it's very cheap, you get a lot of information. The cons is that you miss something. Uh, for instance, we miss in cDNA sequencing using uh, Illumina technology um, information about the poly A sites. Okay, uh, we know that the transcripts they have a poly A tail. The poly A tail is usually not trans not uh, sequenced because first of all it's very complex, and then because we uh, used a poly T poly D T um, adapter to see to to do the retrotranscription step. So we lose this information. This information can be valuable because there are biological uh, meaning of that. Then there are problems with isoforms because when you sequence small pieces of DNA, uh, it's very complex to reconstruct the original transcripts. There are a lot of tools for doing that. In most of the cases, you get a lot of information, but some, some, sometimes you, you lose this information. So you may miss inf information uh, about uh, the kind of isoform, so which isoform is expressed or not. So in general, you have information about the expression of global ex information of expression of a gene, but you lose uh, information about the, the single isoform. And finally, you don't have um, information about modified bases in uh, uh, DNA or RNA. You can rescue some of them using uh, particular techniques where you do immunoprecipitation, but for RNA, I think there is no uh, technology for uh, um, Illumina-like technologies to, to get this information. So you have basically a lot of transcripts that can be uh, can be modified. They have different kind of modification. For instance, just looking at one kind of modification that is called M6A, you have more than 25% of mRNA that can have this kind of uh, chemical modification, uh, and you miss them. So this can be important because, as we can see from the next slides, you have that the poly A length is related with, with transcript stability. So if you have this information, you can know which transcript is stable for, for longer. About the isoforms, that's important because some of the isoforms have uh, a function that is completely different from the other ones. So you may have different isoforms having different functions. And of course, if you don't cannot reconstruct which isoform is the highest expressed, you will get in trouble. So they are called uh, alloforms, basically. So you may have that, for instance, the global gene expression doesn't change, but there is a change in, in the isoforms. And the isoform that is doing uh, another function uh, is, 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 is changing, and you don't know. And then about modified bases, well, they're quite a hot topic now because they seem to be involved in different aspects. Uh, new aspects are, are, are discovered every, uh, every month, more or less. So for instance, now we know that they are important for maintaining hematopoietic stem cell identity and also in uh, regulating viral uh, life cycle, but they are also important in, in some pathologies like cancer uh, and, uh, and also some neurodegenerative disease. So getting this information is, is quite important. It's also, I would say, important in case you want to do an uh, an annotation of a new, a new genome, or you want to discover new functional elements. Of course, this kind of information you can get only with, with other technology. So the technology that allows us to do to, to, to that is, is the Oxford Nanopore 1. This is quite recent, so it's from 2015, and now it's becoming more and more uh, available in different labs. 
So basically the big advantage of this technology compared with the other ones is that uh, either you get DNA or RNA, you are able to, to, do, to do the sequencing. So you feed directly uh, RNA in, in the instruments and you can get the, the, the sequencing of the whole, uh, of the whole transcript. Uh, that's quite interesting stuff. Uh, of course, you don't have the same uh, um, amount of information you get from the DNA. So normally uh, you lose and you need a lot of amount of RNA for that. But if you have enough material, then of course you discover new things. Uh, the biggest difference with, with the short read alignment, uh, short read um, sequencing is that you have, you can have up to uh, megabits of, of, of material sequencing in one long read. So for the genome assembly, that's quite important, but for the transcript, um, it means that you can resolve the whole, the whole transcript. So you don't need to do any kind of reconstruction because you got all of it. So here there is a, a video showing you how the technology works. So basically you have the, the, the strand of transcript, the strand of the transcript that goes inside the pore. So this uh, basically gives you a, a um, a signal, okay? And this signal, electric signal, allows you to, to uh, basically um, make the base call, so to give you the information about the base. Of course, if you have um, a modification in that, in that, in that base, uh, you have an alteration of the electric signal. This means that if you have a program that allows you to do that, you can get information about which base is modified and which kind of modification you get. So you have full uh, transcript reconstruction, okay? So I can end that. I can go on. And uh, uh, you can uh, detect the modification of the base and uh, also the poly, the poly A tail, because since you sequence the whole transcripts, you can get also the length of the poly A. So for this, we, we developed this pipeline. This pipeline is uh, made of three uh, different models that are three different next flow pipelines, but they are packaged in the same uh, um, in the same program. So this allows you to get from the very raw data that are fast five file that contains information about the electric signal. So you transform this electric signal in, uh, in uh, fast queue files, so in, in sequences, and also, uh, you can uh, uh, you can align it. You can uh, uh, trim and so on. So you have a first step that is uh, pre-processing. Then the second step uh, allows you to get this information directly uh, produced from, from the first module and gives you a prediction of chemical modification using different tools. And uh, the third model here, there is a typo, uh, allows you to uh, to guess the tail length. There will be more models that we are developing because uh, there are new things that you can you can get from that. So I hope in the next months we will release a new version of the of the pipeline uh, with new models. So this is just an overview of the first uh, of the first module. Uh, you get uh, from the from the machine uh, the the fast five files, and you can use different tools, uh, Guppy or Albacore, for instance, for doing the base calling. Then you can demultiplex uh, again using other tools. Uh, you can get uh, summaries and uh, uh, the QC report that will be embedded in a final report at the end. Then the, the, the fast Q files that can be trimmed and filtered and uh, they are run in parallel, this kind of stuff. So it's quite fast. And then the fast Q files are uh, aligned to a reference if you provide one uh, using minimap or graph map you can choose which tools at, uh, at the parameter step. Uh, you don't need to change any, any, any part of the pipeline for that. And you can also feed the, the parameters of each step directly from the, the, the parameter part. So this kind of information are then used for, for the alignment and then, then other QC are, are run on it. And the, the final report is shown to you. Uh, when we were preparing this pipeline, we realized that uh, uh, some of the tools uh, were quite slow and uh, they released version of these tools, in particular the, the base calling, 
that uh, could speed up a lot the whole analysis, uh, but using uh, uh, a GPU. So a GPU is uh, uh, a new technology that uh, um, can be used uh, in, in, and can be used uh, using the, the, the graphical processing unit instead of the normal CPUs. The, this was a bit tricky to implement because since we rely, we rely a lot on, on, on containers, we had to find a way to make the containers uh, talking with the drivers and actually this, that time was was uh, still uh, in beta and uh, um, we, uh, we we managed to do it changing the, the configuration and we realized that with that modification that the, the, the first step that was very limiting the the, the base calling uh, speed up a lot so thanks to that uh, we we managed to to make the world procedure very very fast uh, and, and this, thanks to Nextflow, was just with a line of code that we had in the Nextflow config, as you can see. Um, we just make a, a, a container option uh, that, depending on the kind of container you use, either Singularity or Docker, you can just give different, different uh, parameters. Of course, you also need a container that is able to, to, to to run it so that with all the drivers and so on so we developed our own because this pipeline is, is basically everything is done in uh, in uh, dls1 so uh, we, we we made our own uh, container for that in future we hope to 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 scale to the to the new dls and to to use bio containers for that Another problem we had with this uh, this pipeline is that some of the steps uh, were using a, a restricted code. I would say code that cannot be shared with the pipeline. So this was quite um, a problem because when you want to uh, to make your own pipeline, you want this pipeline is freely accessible to everyone. But of course, if the code uh, cannot be freely distributed, then you are in trouble. So what the, the way we found to to overcome this problem uh, was to suggest people to download. Uh, the tools by themselves if they have the, the license and we have clear instruction uh, how to how to how to embed it in the pipeline basically it's it's quite simple because an xflow allows you to put every kind of executable inside the binary folder and thanks to to that basically you don't need to install anything you just uh, get the executables from from uh, from the company, in this case from Oxford Nanopore you place this in the binary you, you make a couple of links and 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 uh, and the, the preprocessing step can 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 work uh, as it was uh, everything embedded. So you once you 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 place it there, you forget about that. And of course, changing the version of uh, of the base caller tool allows you also to to change the the version of of um, of it inside inside the pipeline. Uh, we were talking with uh, people from uh, uh, Nanopore to to make uh, the their tool uh, freely available. Uh, they say, ah, well, yes, we will do it, we will do it. But uh, <laughs> after some time, we decided to find this solution in, in waiting uh, for them for for doing this change in the in their uh, in their uh, license. So this is just an example of the of the report you get at the end. It's done with the, the powerful tool MultiQC. We are we are always grateful to the developers of MultiQC that are the same people that are also uh, pushing a lot for NNF Core. Uh, this is a very great tool, and uh, as you can see, you have all the information, the plots inside, and so on that allows you to uh, to understand how how the analysis is going. Then the uh, the next step is uh, another another model that is called nanotail so uh, nanotail works on the on top on the results from from nano preprocess allows you to get the information to estimate information about the size of the the poly a and it allows you to do that thanks to uh, a small pipeline that that we wrote Basically, you get the output for nano preprocess, and without touching anything, you launch the pipeline and you run two different tools. Uh, one is Tyrfindar, the other one nano polish. They are parallelized, and so they should be quite fast. And then at the end, you get these two predictions, and they are combined, and you get also the intersection. So you can get the information from both tools together with the with a combined prediction where you expect those uh, predictions that are called by two 
independent tools are a bit more reliable. Then there is NanoMod that allows you to get the chemical modification from, from different uh, transcripts. So for doing that, there is another module. This module, again, works with the outputs from Nano preprocess. It, they need uh, a wall type and KO for, for getting this information. So you, you need to, to, to run Nano preprocess on both uh, sample, on wall type and KO, and then you feed both of them to Nano preprocess. There are a number of tools that are run, and then uh, you get the prediction from, from both of them, and you can uh, then evaluate across the information or, or do uh, other analysis for, uh, for, uh, for filtering for the real ones. So this is basically the pipeline. And uh, uh, the pipeline allows you to, to run a, a tool selection at each step. So you can, you can choose which is your favorite tools. Uh, some of them are, are embedded. Other ones, we are, we are embedding it. So in future, we, we will have more tools. Uh, it's completely customized the command line parameters, so you can fit the parameters without changing the code. Um, it's quite optimized the parallelization of the very slow steps, and it includes also using GPUs for the base calling, and in future we will plan to do this also for the alignment. Uh, it's able to run in the cloud. We tested in uh, in Amazon uh, cloud. We had some little trouble at the beginning because we we wanted to use the GPU in the Amazon cloud. This was not so simple since not every nodes in Europe has this uh, this possibility. Uh, now they are they are they're increasing the number of uh, nodes with the GPUs. I think we went to Germ up to Germany to, for for running it, but. It was quite fast and, and quite, uh, I would say, cheap if you compare with the normal CPUs. And then, of course, allows you to use uh, uh, restricted base callers uh, since there is no limit to, to, to what you can put in the bind, uh, bind uh, folder. You can change also the, the, the version of the base caller. So we are not bound to a particular version of the base caller. So, this is just to give you some, some, some idea about the application, because in the consortium, you are interested in the annotation, in discovering new functional uh, uh, elements. So there are people that are using direct RNA sec for, uh, for uh, getting the full length transcriptome of, of some species, or so, to, to search for uh, uh, alternative splicing associated with, uh, with development, and, and so on. And you can get this, of course, with, uh, with, uh, with Nanopore, with the RNA sequencing, uh, you can get uh, um, information about viral pathogens. And also, I think there are also interesting stuff about uh, uh, bacteria and, uh, and uh, metagenomics uh, analysis. And then finally, there are uh, direct RNA application for detecting uh, the chemical modification of, uh, of the transcripts. Well. We also give this uh, this other information uh, that we 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 had this application of of the tools for uh, for sequencing uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, viruses. Uh, since this is viral RNA, there are people that are doing direct RNA sec of of the virus. So um, we decide. Well, uh, the the group of uh, Evanova uh, started to use this uh, this pipeline for doing uh, uh, for doing. Uh, reproducible analysis of those data and uh, and gives also this information in a, in, a, in a website i think this is quite interesting because uh, of course you can get a lot of information more uh, on this virus also looking at the chemical modification and the alternative transcripts so about new developments, what we're planning to do uh, is uh, to add more models, tools for analysis. For instance, we already have in place, but it's just still beta, nano preprocess simple. That is a, a module for uh, analyzing data that are already base called, because there are people that are using base calling live uh, in their instruments, so they don't need to do the base calling twice. Uh, then nano ISO form for detecting alternative transcripts. Uh, we are planning also to add another base caller uh, that is open source. The problem of this base caller is that not yet uh, available to get direct RNA uh, data. So it could work for cDNA, because our pipeline works also with cDNA. But of course, the other two modules, they need uh, direct RNA-seq. 
and then to support more GPU-based tools like Mapper, the multiplexer, and so on. And of course, more important stuff is to migrate everything to DSL2, uh, generating a number of models, uh, and so on. This is a bit more uh, tricky because it means to rewrite everything from scratch, but but it's it's uh, it's nice because this will make the whole uh, uh, ecosystem more uh, more easy to maintain and also scalable. So uh, thanks for your attention. Now, if you have questions, I will be happy to to get them. Yeah, thanks a lot for, for your great talk. Let's see if there are any questions. So in the meanwhile, uh, I can ask one. Uh, so I, I was thinking about this use of the CPUs. So I guess that this could be used for, for other genomic pipelines. Have you been thinking about using this approach to speed up other pipelines that you are using in regular basis in, in your daily work or? Well, this is this depends a lot on the, the tools, uh, if the tools get advantage to use GPU or not. For instance, in this particular case, they the base callers, they have a, a, a system for, um, for uh, you say, getting the information from, from, uh, from, uh, from the electrical signal. So uh, they use for that uh, um, machine learning approach and machine learning approach, they can take a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, advantage from that. But other tools, if they don't uh, get uh, the, same, the same technologies, if they don't use the same technology like machine learning or um, artificial intelligence, I don't think that it will be really an advantage for that. Also because there are machines that are a bit more expensive, they are not so, you know, already available in, 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 uh, in, um, in, in the clusters, in the HPC and, uh, in, in the cloud. Thanks. So is there any other question from the audience? So it seems that it's already Friday afternoon and people, <laughs> it's tired. <laughs> okay, if not, uh, we will open a, a breakout room and mm -hmm. with Luca. So feel free to join. I, I, sorry, sorry, okay. Jose. Jose, I had uh, I had one question for Luca. So uh, after, so you mentioned that Master of Poor is uh, written in DL, DSL one. Mm -hmm. After uh, uh, Paolo's presentation this morning and uh, the spin of DLS two. Are you considering shifting, or is there any reason why you you will not move to to DSL two? Or uh, I can anticipate that we are already doing the moving. So uh, uh -huh. I'm I'm one of the enthusiasts of DLS two. Uh, so I hope to have it uh, uh, soon again. <laughs> okay. So there's and, no reasons at all. And uh, you know, I don't think Phil is around anymore. But uh, I guess this would fit very nicely in in NF core. So is it something you're considering? Are you considering engaging Phil to, to see if an NF core incorporation would make sense? We are in touch with them. Well, actually, this, this is uh, funny because there is, uh, they were preparing their own uh, version of, uh, let's say, nano preprocess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it's called NanoSec. Uh, uh -huh. While we were uh, in the reviewing phase of, of the paper. So I, I, I noticed that. So we, uh -huh. get in, we get in touch already. Uh, since they are in this um, transition in mm -hmm. moving from the one to two DSL, maybe this can be a good uh, a good opportunity for that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, why not? I think as, uh, as I see it, the, the, the benefits of uh, NF core interoperability are real. You know, the fact that you can plug things in, plug things out in your system. So this is uh, you know it's it's a virtuous circle, and and so. We, we, we are still, and, and it's a discussion we are going to have with, uh, with the Bovray Consortium, if we want to go for a NF core compliance, which I think brings a lot of benefits, exactly the same. You know, even if, even if your pipeline was not going to become an official NF core pipeline, I would encourage you for NF core compliance because suddenly it means you get all these layers of authoring tools that become available to you. And, and, and as far as Bovreg is concerned, and what I was saying is that I, I, I'm still split between, I think the best, the more favorable thing to do will be to encourage people to adapt an existing pipeline to their own need. But of course it can be a lot of work because you have to understand the exact 
functioning of the existing pipeline. And then you have to figure out how to add the modules that will allow you reproducing exactly your ongoing analysis. So it's a little bit more work, but of course then it makes you, it, it, it connects you to something that is alive and that will remain maintain whether you do it or not. So that uh, there's a lot of added benefits to this little extra work at the beginning. And the alternative of course, is to make your own pipeline NFCO compliant, which means that as long as you maintain it to remain NFCO compliant, it will remain connected to the galaxy of tools maintained by, by NFCO. Well, I should not use the word galaxy, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when they say galaxy, they say, oh, what you're talking about? <laughs> but uh, no, seriously. And so the, 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 um, the benefits of this is, of course, it, it's much less work because you simply have to wrap an existing pipeline into NFCO. And so Phil has shown that there are many tools to do this and that this is something that is very well supported. And so I think these are the two the two alternative solution that that that, that I would like to propose to to our Bovreg uh, collaborator if they want to shift to a, a, a next flow based uh, pipeline maintenance. Okay, and so that yeah, was that that, 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 was, that was a long question slash comments and slash suggestions. But uh, to, to to finish, I, I I cut you short. So, are you considering what? Well, what relation to NF Core in the future are you considering? Would you like to be part of NF Core or? We are already speaking about that. So it's not uh -huh. something that is, uh, let's say, uh, completely out of the blue. So we uh -huh. are talking with them about uh, master reports. Actually, we get in touch after the publication. Uh, and I don't have any problem with that. Many, okay. Maybe uh, when, since there is this shift of the LS2, maybe we can start uh, uh, talking again. To, to help them with the, the, the creation of some modules and, uh, and in the end, yeah, to have, to have, to have this there. It's, it's, it's not, a, not a big and deal. I have one more question. And now I'm, I'm putting my, uh, my uh, NAR Genomics and Bioinformatics Chief Editor cap. Uh, um, how easy is it for you guys from the core facility to publish pipelines? Because you, 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 you develop a lot of pipelines uh, often there is not so much novelty in the pipeline, but it's still a huge amount of work to get all the pieces put together, everything properly validated, all the quality control. And so even though, and that makes it difficult to publish because the reviewers go and say, nah, there's nothing new. And then they say no. So do you find it reasonably easy to publish or would you find a, a, a section of an existing journal dedicated to pipeline, do you think it will be useful to increase the visibility of the tools you're developing? I, I think it's it's uh, essential, I would say, uh, because uh, there is, uh, of course, there is interest from the scientific point of view to have uh, something working, okay, and maintained. Uh, on the other side, uh, there is also this problem of the novelty, you know, say, okay, you make a pipeline, it's nice. So you need to also give some information about uh, uh, a test data, um, what it gets at the end. Uh, uh, and then, of course, the reviewer can give you a lot of uh, help saying, OK, you say that this is uh, easy to use. I, I tried to use it, and it was not so easy. So you should improve the documentation for this. So I think it makes sense a lot to have a section of a, of a, of a journal, or even a, a small uh, scientific journal that uh, uh, takes care of resources for researchers. And I think pipelines will be one, but also, I don't know, also um, let's say golden standards yeah, because yeah. reference data sets yeah, reference yes. data sets and uh, and also I would say something about uh, you know uh, testing that is something that I know that you are really interested in it uh, because once you make a pipeline and then there is another pipeline that you say okay my pipeline is better than the other ones but there is no really a way to make a, a test a comparison mm -hmm. between these mm -hmm. two two methods uh, you should yeah. rely on the second paper uh, I agree and adding to this that there is my experience is that uh, if the problem is sufficiently complex, there never is a situation where one tool is always better. It's, it's, yeah. it's always fragmented. Yeah. One tool will be, you know, the tools are always biased with respect to the original problem they were developed for. They can be repurposed a little bit, but on average, they will do very well on the original problem they were designed for. And, and, and so, 
it's not necessarily the same as your problem. So in reality, you want you want to measure these things, yes. I, I, actually, one of the things we were doing in, in, in our pipeline, we were wrapping a couple of tools for, uh, you know, for getting the intersection and say, okay, what we get at the end is, is very good in the end. We cannot do the intersection because they were uh, really optimized for two different aspects. Uh -huh. So they were giving you good results, but there was uh -huh. no intersection. So it's oh, like they yeah. were getting just one part of the problem. So we decided in the end to give the whole results to them, mm -hmm. to, to, to the users, because they were not bad, but they were capturing two different, two different things. So um, pipelines can also give you this kind of help, uh, wrapping different tools and gives you at the end something that is more than just running the different tools together. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Luca. Very oh. nice talk. OK, so with this, uh, we close this talk and actually all the sessions. Uh, with talks of the workshop.